What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. And today, this video is a follow up to my 2012 MacBook Pro upgrade video that I made four years ago, which is actually my most viewed video ever. It's got 1.5 million views now, which is insane because I was just doing this upgrade for myself anyway and decided I'd film it. All right, so this bad boy, this 2012 MacBook Pro was rocking a 2.6 gigahertz quad core i7, 16 gigs of DDR3, 1600 megahertz RAM. It's got the anti-glare screen. It's got one of the last NVIDIA video cards in it. So it's a GT650M with one gigabyte of memory. So the question I get asked a lot is if I still have it. Yep, I still have it. And if I still use it. I would have to say, yeah, I kind of still use it, but I don't work from it anymore. I upgraded to the newer 2019 MacBook Pro but I have used it for data transfer on set dumping footage, but I mainly just use it for web browsing, watching YouTube videos in the kitchen, uh, airplane to my TV, and I also use it to do a lot of my banking and stuff. But that's not to say that it isn't still capable. It's still a good creative tool, and I'll show you guys that a little bit later in the video. So I broke apart the RAID about a year ago and I was doing a bigger job recording and I needed to install Pro Tools 11, which is my old version of Pro Tools and some plugins and they only work on Yosemite. So I had this big multi-track recording session and my interface that has a whole bunch of inputs needed to have this older version of Yosemite. So that's why I broke it apart. I dual booted it so that one drive had Yosemite and the other drive had High Sierra on it. My Pro Tools interface uses FireWire and it's perfect because this laptop still has FireWire 800 and it basically has every port on it, even an SD card reader. That was back in the glory days when you didn't need a dongle for everything. But anyway, if you wanna see that MacBook Pro in the background of the video I was recording the audio on, I'll put a link in the description. Some of you may know that Apple removed the ability to make a bootable RAID 0. So it's not as easy now, but I was still able to actually get it to work. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is download macOS Catalina Patcher. I'll put a link in the description. This will allow us to install macOS Catalina to this MacBook Pro or older MacBook Pros as well that aren't supported. Make sure that you also have a USB drive plugged in that's over eight gigabytes because this is what we're gonna install it to. You can either browse for a copy or download a copy. I'm gonna download a copy because I don't have one right now. This takes about 10 to 15 minutes to download and once it's done, it's gonna actually ask you to make a bootable installer to the USB drive. So we're gonna choose our USB drive here and then we're gonna make our bootable OS Catalina installer. Once it's done, you're gonna to need to grab an external hard drive or I'm using an external SSD right here and the bootable USB drive that we also just created. I'm gonna plug both of those into the computer. Now keep in mind, this is actually gonna format all the drives, so make sure you back up all your content. Then when we boot the system, we're gonna hold down the option key and hold this down until we actually see our options to choose the drives. Then we're gonna choose the OS Catalina installer drive. This is gonna load us into the actual installer. Make sure you go to Disk Utility and ignore the other hard drives right now. Right now we're just going to install this to our external hard drive and I'm gonna erase the external hard drive as APFS. Once that external hard drive is done being formatted as APFS, we're gonna go through the prompts here and install Mac OS. So continue, agree, agree. Then we're gonna choose our external SSD and hit install. Now this roughly takes around 15 to 25 minutes, so I'm just gonna speed through it here. Once it's done, it'll boot in. And the first thing we wanna do is actually go to disk utility. So I'm showing this as if I had installed two fresh new SSDs into the system. We're gonna go up to file, then RAID Assistant. Then I'm gonna choose Striped RAID 0, hit next, and then I'm gonna select both my two SSDs that I have installed. Then I'm gonna format them as APFS, choose a chunk size, and then give it a name. I'm just gonna call this RAID for now. Then hit next, and then hit create, and this will create the RAID 0 drive for you. Now we're done here, you can see it made a RAID drive, it's 500 gigabytes, which is combining the two 250 gig drives I have in the system. Next we're gonna need to download a program called Super Duper. It's free, I'll put a link in the description. And basically what we need to do is copy our external hard drive to our newly created RAID drive. And what this is gonna do is copy all the files from the external drive 
and make a bootable RAID drive so that we can actually boot without the external hard drive. This takes roughly around 30 minutes to copy, so I'm actually gonna speed through this, but once it finishes, you're gonna restart the system, make sure you have the external hard drive unplugged, because we're just gonna boot off the newly created RAID drive. This actually took a really long time to boot, and I didn't know if it was actually gonna work, but it finally did, and I think it's just slow like this for the first time. But once it finally loaded in, everything looked like it was working as it should. The first thing I wanna do is actually go to terminal and we're gonna type in a command here called sudo trim force enable. And this is gonna add trim to the SSDs so that it can do trim management because these drives aren't assigned by Apple. Once you do this, you're gonna restart the system again. Then it's gonna boot back in. It should boot a little bit faster this time. We're gonna to go to about this Mac and I'm gonna show you that I actually applied trim support to these SSDs. So as you can see here, we have trim support now and everything's basically ready to go to install your programs onto it. So here's the thing. Catalina seems to be running okay on RAID 0 drives, even though it's not supposed to. It's, people have said it's impossible. I didn't really think it was that hard, to be honest. You just basically need Catalina to be installed on an external drive first. But here's the thing I've been noticing is that it's, it's actually a big issue, but I can't download anything from the web browser. It just says it's damaged but I can download things through the app store and it installs fine. So I think it has something to do with the permissions and not being able to change it. And that could be why you're not supposed to be able to do it in RAID 0. Honestly, Catalina is by far my least favorite OS that they've ever come out with. It's constantly asking you to ask for passwords and permissions and allow this to work and allow that to work. They've just locked so many things down. Super annoying. Um, I'm just gonna probably run Mojave on it like I am on my Hackintosh and my main MacBook Pro. So doing the Blackmagic disk test, it's reporting that the RAID 0 is getting around 900 megabytes a second read and write, so that's pretty good. All the apps are running pretty well on this still. If you're doing things like photo editing, retouching, things in like Lightroom or Photoshop, it handles things no problem. Um, you know, it even actually loaded up a Premiere project that was 4K, a couple videos overlaid with grading, and I was actually surprised that it could run it at a quarter quality with not too much lag. It was dropping frames here and there, and the fans were maxed out because these MacBook Pros, as you know, ran super hot. So I'm gonna say that it kind of works, but I wouldn't recommend this. I'd still recommend just installing Catalina on one drive and keeping the set going for storage or something like that and not doing the RAID 0, you're gonna have far less headaches and you know, if you wanna keep your OS up to date, then I guess you can run Catalina. All that said, if you wanna watch my guide on how to replace the old slow hard drive in that MacBook Pro with a faster SSD, um, or replace the optical drive for another SSD, or even upgrade your RAM, check out that video. I just thought I'd make this follow-up video since it's been four years when I made that and I'm still getting a lot of questions from you guys on this thing. Um, but that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Don't forget to wash your hands. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh yeah, can't forget this. All the apps are printing, printing, printing running. They upgraded to the newer 29 Mac, 29. Great. Remember when this light used to be back here? Doing this upgrade for myself anyway and decided to film it. Disk task, disk task, disk task.